The oceans of this Earth hold many secrets. Despite the fact that 70% of Earth's surface is covered by oceans, we haven't really explored a lot of them. In fact, it's kind of like an alien world within our own. We probably know more about the surface of Mars than we know about the ocean floor. As scientists begin to venture down as deep as humanly possible, they've come across astounding, scary, and sometimes simply inexplicable things that show that civilizations of the past were a lot more mysterious than we might have thought. Watch until the end of the video and let us know which one left you more confused. A small Greek island between Kythera and Crete called Antikythera is where the Antikythera mechanism was discovered. It was found in 1901, when divers looking for marine sponges came across a collection of sunken artifacts from classical antiquity. Despite being incomplete and in bad shape, the mechanism is made up of about 37 bronze gears and are kept inside a wooden box. The Antikythera mechanism, which was discovered to be more than 2,200 years old, was at first thought to have served as an ancient computer. More thorough research from the 1970s later confirmed that being an ancient computer was far too implausible. According to the current hypothesis, the mechanism was an orrery, a solar system model that calculates and keeps track of celestial time. Among many other things, it could determine the ecliptic longitudes of the Moon and Sun, the Moon's phases, the planets' synodic phases, the metonic calendar's omitted days, and the Olympiad cycle. Although it was created by a genius, combining not just the cycles from Babylonian astronomy, the mathematics from Plato's academy, but also the old Greek astronomical theories, many still contend that it is simply too nebulous to know for sure. The ceramic pot, copper tube, and iron rod, together known as the Baghdad Battery, were discovered in Iraq close to the ancient capitals of the Parthian and Sasanian empires. They think that the three different components were originally assembled to form a single machine. The purpose of this device, which seems to have been capable of generating electricity, remains unclear. The battery was initially discovered by workers of the Iraq Antiquities Department, whose director, Wilhelm Koenig, first proposed that it may have been used as a galvanic cell to electroplate things. Although this theory was widely accepted when it was first published, it has now been disproven because no electroplated artifacts from the same time period and region have been found. Paul Kieser of the University of Alberta in Edmonton developed an alternative theory in 1993. He said that rather than acting as a galvanic cell, a battery served as a local analgesic that could numb pain by discharging an electrical charge. By doing so, it would have taken the place of electric fish, which were occasionally utilized in Greco-Roman communities in their ocean to treat headaches, gout, and other ailments. The Viking sailors of the 9th century were able to navigate their nautical routes of conquest and trade without the aid of a compass, by using the stars at night and the sun during the day. The sun could always be found using magical sunstones, according to old Scandinavian folklore, but none of these stories specifically describe the appearance of this mysterious object. No such sunstones have ever been discovered at Viking archaeological sites, but a crystal discovered in a British shipwreck may help establish their existence. The Alderney was an Elizabethan warship that sank in 1592 close to the Channel Islands, and the Alderney crystal was discovered among the wreckage. According to the research team led by the University of Rennes in France, the stone was found closer than three feet from a pair of navigation dividers, indicating it may have been kept with the ship's other navigational tools. Chemical testing proved that the stone was Icelandic spar, or calcite crystal, which is said to have been the Vikings' preferred mineral for their legendary sunstones, as recounted in St. Olaf's Viking epic from the 13th century. However, no scientists have actually determined how the Vikings have used the sunstones, and how the composition of the Alderney crystal would contribute to such. 
A well-liked location for scuba diving is the Yonaguni Island region. Many would agree that it's a must-see when scuba diving close to Okinawa, located in the southwestern tip of the Japanese coast. The mysterious Yonaguni pyramid-like structure and its surroundings are now being explored by divers. In 1986, while diving off the coast of Yonagunijima in search of a new location to observe hammerhead sharks, Kihachiro Aritake made the strange find that some archaeologists refer to as the archaeological find of the century. Aritake decided to swim further out than the authorized safety zone, and lo and behold, a large stone building 35 meters below the surface of the ocean was in front of him. He examined the structure and was astounded by how enormous it was. It was hard to say exactly what it was because of the thick coral and crustacean. After exploring it and taking pictures, he came back to land. Years were spent researching the location by Masaaki Kimura, a professor of marine geology and seismology at the University of the Ryukus. In order to find a solution, he observed and gathered information. Although his conclusions were significant, they were met with opposition and skepticism. Numerous divers continued to visit the location in order to draw their opinions. Is it a submerged city that formerly housed a long-gone civilization? Or was it a rock formation created by nature? Absolute confirmation of the answer is still unknown. On October 28, 2011, underwater archaeologists helped recover five cannons and two other large artifacts from the shipwreck of the Queen Anne's Revenge. This was one of the most notorious pirate ships ever, belonging to the sea-terrifying bloodthirsty Blackbeard. The ship sailed around in 1718, and it's been assumed that it has vanished over time. The shipwreck, which is located off the coast of Beaufort, was first discovered in 1996, and archaeologists have been steadily gathering artifacts from the site ever since. About 280,000 artifacts have been retrieved so far, including cannonballs, navigational and medical instruments, an anchor, and more, but archaeologists are still eager to recover more before the hurricane-battered site deteriorates further. While the recovery of so many cannons is a major step forward in the ongoing excavation of the Queen Anne's Revenge, historical records show that Blackbeard's ship held 40 cannons total, but the divers have recovered 24 cannons and mapped six others so far. Israel's Sea of Galilee has a mysterious circular structure that is around 30 feet below the surface and has a diameter larger than a Boeing 747 jet. Using sonar to explore the lake's bottom in 2003, scientists found it by mistake, but it wasn't until recently that their discovery was made public. Though cairns are typically used to identify graves in other regions of the world, the researchers who discovered this underwater rock pile, or cairn, had no idea what it may have been used for. According to Shmuel Marco, a geophysicist from Tel Aviv University, who also recorded footage of the structure while diving to study it, its size and position suggested that it might have been built underwater as a kind of fish nursery. Archaeologists believe that it was most likely constructed on dry land, before being subsequently buried by the lake. Although none of these recognized structures are underwater, there are other enormous rock formations nearby. The experts speculated following the discovery that the former land-based cairn may have been submerged due to rising sea levels. According to Yitzhak Paz of the Israel Antiquities Authority and Ben-Gurion University, this underwater structure may be over 4,000 years old and might be the remains of a fortified village. Ancient Roman medicine was perhaps the last thing that researchers expected to find in a shipping container, yet that is exactly what they did. Off the Tuscan coast, the Roman shipping ship Relito del Pozzino sank in the early Bronze Age. Over 2,000 years later, in the 1980s and 1990s, an excavation crew from the Tuscany Archaeological Superintendency started to bring up rotting wood planks from the ruins. One of the things they found were medicine pills. 
The pills had been preserved totally dry over the years since the jars had been sealed, offering a tantalizing opportunity for us to learn exactly what the ancient Romans used as medication. In order to learn more about the treatments employed by the ancient Romans, Italian researchers in 2013 examined the pharmaceutical tablets found off the Tuscan coast. Their conclusion? They contain iron oxide, starch, beeswax, pine resin, and other plant-based substances in addition to several zinc compounds. The researchers speculate that the pills may have been used as eyewash or treatment for the eyes based on their shape and substance. The rare look into Roman-era medical procedures is fascinating, even though it's unclear how effective this kind of substance would have been as an actual eye therapy. When Swedish divers known as Ocean X Team were looking for sunken treasure in the Bothnian Sea in 2011, they came across the Baltic Sea anomaly. The Gulf of Bothnia flows into the Baltic Sea and connects Sweden and Finland through water. The divers captured a strange sonar image at a depth of 300 feet while on a treasure hunting adventure in the landlocked body of water. The object has two inlets and three prong-like sections, and it has a nearly circular form. Numerous conspiracy theorists have spent years trying to explain this strange shape in order to prove that it was created by extraterrestrial life. The object is allegedly a 14,000-year-old temple constructed by a highly developed civilization centuries ago, according to some. In 2017, according to an Israeli scientist who evaluated rock samples obtained by OceanX, claims that there are unrecorded metals never before seen. These metals could not have come from normal geological processes. Another scientist claimed that it was just a volcanic rock. We can be sure of one thing. All scientists are still perplexed by this phenomenon and are working hard to understand it. 